Okay, so uh, before we start with linear algebra, I'd like to cover a very small topic. Uh, it's related to polynomials. I hope you guys are familiar with what a polynomial is. So how many of you are not familiar with what a polynomial is? Great. So, uh, okay. So, let us first uh, tackle a problem in which I ask you to find all integer roots of a polynomial. So you're given a polynomial. Uh, so if you want I can specify the input format. You are first given the degree of the polynomial, polynomial and then you are given the coefficients of uh, each, uh, let's say, okay. So input you first get k, which is the degree of the polynomial. And then you get an uh, get a list of size k size k plus one, where ai denotes the coefficient of x bar i. So I am not asking you to solve the whole meaning find all the roots of the polynomial just, but just the integer roots of the polynomial. How do you do that? Sorry? Yeah, so uh, okay. So what he says is we can do Newton Rapson. The problem with that is if you remember the formula has f dash x in the denom denominator, right? Let's say my two roots, uh, meaning two of the roots of the polynomial coincide. So when you are approaching that root, f dash x would also approach 0. Because f dash x will also have a root at the same point. So this fraction would actually start approaching infinity and your newton rapson will start behaving anomalously. So let's say our polynomial is uh, a n x bar n a n minus 1 a 1 x plus a 0. This is what we have to solve. Right? Let's take this a 0 from here to here. Okay, you can take an x common from here. Since every root will satisfy this equation and since x is x divides LHS, so x should also divide RHS. So all the integer roots would be factor of a0. You understand that? Do you understand this part? So now we are we have reduced our problem from finding the roots to factorization. We have already discussed techniques for factorization yesterday. I'm sorry, day before yesterday. So I'm hoping that part we can do. Now we face a more generic problem. Let's say I tell you that you are again given this polynomial. All the roots of the polynomial are real. Okay? You are again given this polynomial. All the roots of the polynomial are real. You have to report each and every root. So it's not an integer anymore. The roots are real. You have to find out the roots of the polynomial. Let's for this question uh, assume that the degree is not more than 100 or 10. What I am looking for is how do you approach this problem? Okay. Can then you say they can be double roots? Uh, we we'll first check the derivative if it has any, if it has any roots and we we'll check for the roots of derivative. Okay, how do you check for derivative? So let's say I have a 100 degree equation. The derivative is also a 99 degree equation, right? Yeah. So how do you find the root for that equation? Yeah, okay, fine, recursively, okay. 
So how do we do it? Fine. Continue with the approach. Once you get that, check all the votes have been eliminated to see if there are votes of the thing. So eliminate all those the votes. Okay. And then you have only like single votes everywhere. And then international votes. Find bounds and votes by like just plugging values. Uh, all right. So what you're saying is that I'll solve for the derivative, and then you will remove. You will first check whether or not that those uh, roots are actually roots of this polynomial. Yeah. If they are, one multiple roots basically. Yeah. Okay. Fine. After I have a single root, so Newton uh, version should work. Yeah. Fine. That's reasonable. Okay, so uh, should I explain explain what he said? He said was that um, if you if you are solving for f x equal to zero, you instead solve for this. Again, for solving this, you'll call the function recursively. So once you have roots for this, let's say they are r zero, r one, r two, something something. You check for every root if it is also a root of this equation. If it is a root of this equation, you divide this equation by x minus r zero. However, I'm not very sure how do you accomplish the division, but fine, you do that. You divide by x minus r zero. You are sub you might run into floating point errors and all. So I'll suggest a better better method, but fine. You divide the polynomial by this. Since it is a root, the polynomial would be divisible. You end up with a new polynomial. Let's say if it's f new of x. Now you do the same again. You do the same thing for r1. You check if it's a it's a root of the new polynomial. If it is, you again divide. That way, uh, the polynomial that you will be left with would have distinct roots. If you have distinct roots, you can you can use one of the uh, Techniques which was described by Akhil in the search optimization class, Newton-Raphson method. Do you guys remember what Newton-Raphson method was? Fine. So you can use that technique to find out all the roots. Okay, this is one approach. Fine. Again, one more thing which you can do is again this method might also not be as much robust. But what we can do is, if you want to solve f(x) equal to zero. Let's say I find the roots for f dash x equal to zero. Again, if the roots are r zero, r one, r two, like this, in increasing order, then my roots for this f x would lie in this order. First root would lie in this interval minus infinity to r zero. The other root would lie in the interval r zero to r one. The other root from r one to r two. Like this. Now, if you know that in an interval, f x is only one root in an interval from A to B. f x is only one root, and f x is continuously increasing. Then you can do a binary search on x to find out what is that x in that interval. So you can do a binary search for each of these intervals. You will end up with the root for each interval. And of course, if R1 and R2, are, let's say, are equal, then you can, you can directly say that one of them is the root. You get the point? Okay. So uh, let's see one more problem. Let's say you know that you are given a polynomial. You don't know what the polynomial is, but you know what is the degree of the polynomial. So let's say the degree of the polynomial is n. So you are given n values of x and corresponding values of f x. So you told that the degree is k. And you are given k such pairs x comma f x. Now what I want you to do is that I will give you some other x. Let's say x one, x two, x three. You have to report to me what is f of x1, what is f of x2, what is f of x3, and so on. Excuse me, we know that the all the roots must be 
uh, factors of A0. Correct? So that is uh, also a negative one factor. So suppose we have A0 as 6. So the numbers in consideration are 1, 2, 3, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 6. So how do we check the value of the polynomial at these points? We have to evaluate the polynomial. But that might exceed, that might easily overflow because you do x bar n and all. So I'll tell the method which won't overflow, but you can still check whether that's a root or not. So the equation is, you have to check whether you are given a x. For a given x, you have to check whether a and x bar n plus a n minus 1, x bar n minus 1, plus so on, up to a naught is equal to 0. Correct? Suppose this is equal, you have to check for equality to y where y is initially 0. So, you have x into a n x power n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 x power n minus 2 plus so on up till a 1 equal to y minus a naught. So, for, keep on the observation that x should be divisible by uh, y minus a naught. I mean, obviously x into something is equal to y minus a naught, so x plus divided by y minus a naught. So if x doesn't divide y minus a naught, then x is surely not a good thing. Agreed? So if x is divided by y minus a naught, we have, say, the problem a n x bar n minus 1 plus so on up till a 1 equal to y minus a naught by x. This is a problem of size n minus 1. So with this, you will never have any overflow issues to check whether a problem is equal to 1. Evaluating a polynomial will only have overflow issues. So for each root, this takes order, order of n time. For each factor of yeah. Okay, so this was the first problem that we encountered. He has a better, meaning he was just suggesting a uh, solution in which you, would do, you won't run into overflow issues. Okay. So now back to the problem that we suggested. You are given n pairs of x, fx and then you are given a few more x values you have to uh, find out fx for all of those values by the way this problem is also known by the name of polynomial interpolation so we can do like uh, first we have a system of k equations okay solve these things first the elimination of a method okay and subsequently and then but that will take order of n yeah so okay the idea is right. Uh, one method could be that what you do is you can assume that my polynomial is a n this. This is my polynomial, okay? You are given n pairs of x comma f x. So you can substitute those x values here to get n equations and linear equations okay now your problem reduces to solving a system of equations linear equations we will cover that in the next topic which is by the way order of n cube for now just assume that this is order of an n cube how it is done, we will explain it in, in, in the next topic of linear algebra. So, you have n equations, you solve the, for them, you will get the value of a n, a n minus 1 and so on. Now, for every x, you substitute that into this equation and you will get the corresponding fx value. So now, this is order of n cube. Can you suggest something which is better than n cube? Oh yeah, like an interpolation. Can you explain what it is? Yeah, we have a uh, n value the mic. Well, uh, we have n values x1 to x n x n and the read corresponds to uh, f of x1 and so on. So now uh, we consider polynomial f of x1 into uh for the answers f of x i multiplied by product of all x minus x ones except x i x i okay divided by x i minus uh, x2, x1, 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 x